everybody, welcome back to theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Again, it's theclinicaltrialsguru.com in the middle of ramping up my first week of the CRA Academy. Uh, I've actually started it since January, but I just took on a new group of students in April for this quarter. So um, let me know if you're still interested. Uh, if you miss out, this is literally the last week that I can take you in for this group. Otherwise, you gotta wait till July for the next group. So call or text 949-415-6256. Today's topic is gonna be about closeout visit. So what is a closeout visit? And I'm just gonna kind of explain what a closeout visit is from the perspective of a research site because that's what I have experience with. But um, it applies to CRAs as well. So a closeout visit, otherwise known as a COV, which is the acronym, or a termination visit, is when the study ends at a site. And the study could end at a site for various reasons, all right? It could be a routine closeout visit, which means that all the sites are being closed out because the study's over, right? Either enrollment's completed or the sponsor decided not to do the study anymore. So enrollment closes, data is captured, all patients are completed, right? Either they complete the study or they early terminate. Um, all the data is clean, queries are answered, and then the closeout visit occurs. So that's a routine closeout visit. There's also non-routine closeout visits where it's just one site that's being shut down for a number of reasons. Uh, usually they're non-compliance with the protocol. That's a big reason why, shites, why sites get shut down. Um, another one is zero, and I mean zero, screening activity. So I tell sites all the time, hey, if you don't want to get shut down, especially when you have these competitive enrollment and you have a lot of sites and sponsors even have backup sites ready to go in the case or in the event that one of the sites they currently have are not performing well, which means zero uh, enrollment and certainly zero screening activity. They're not going to tolerate a site just wasting time. So if, you're, if you get a study and you don't start screening immediately and you've heard the sponsor emphasize the fact that they're serious about enrollment and they have backup sites ready to go they're not playing games they're being serious it's happened to a few of my sites in the past we've been shut down for lack of enrollment activity happens a lot but you definitely want to have some screening activity even if you're gonna screen fill people just start screening have some activity hopefully get some randomizations so sites can get shut down for not screening, right? So at a closeout visit, the monitor comes in and um, they're primarily going to be looking at all the source, all the regulatory, to just to tie up any loose ends. They're also going to be doing IP, which is the investigational product, one final accountability. And this is important because every pill, every bottle, every, every blister card has to be accounted for and logged. And then the CRA will actually ship the IP back to the sponsor. Um, either the sponsor will destroy it or the sponsor will recycle the IP for another trial they're doing or for other purposes. So the CRA returns the IP, the CRA returns the, any study related equipment that the site receive from the sponsor, typically ECG machines, but it could be spirometers, could be a number of things. The CRA will ship this back to the sponsor or to that various vendor. Um, the PI will sign off on the delegation log, the delegation of duties log, so they'll include an end date for everybody. So there, the end date will be the closeout visit. For anyone who hasn't had an end date at the research site who's on the delegation log, if you didn't already have an end date, maybe this person left the site prior to the closeout visit, they would have had another end date. For everyone else, the end date will be the closeout visit. The PI will need to sign off on it. The monitor is going to make sure that it happens. Any final queries are answered. Any outstanding protocol deviations need to be wrapped up. IRB needs to be notified that the site will be closed and that the site needs to send them the closeout report, the final closeout report. Um, deviations, let's see, IRB. Um, oh, archiving, huge, 
huge issue with closeouts. So the, it's the investigator's responsibility to maintain steady records even after the study's over, right? And um, the FDA has different guidelines. I believe it's five years after the drug has already been approved or after the study has closed. Uh, European sponsors typically have longer timelines, like 20 years. Um, and so this should be in your contract. Every sponsor is different, so look in your contract. But it's the investigator's responsibility to keep those study archives on site, and usually on site means they can outsource that to a, a third party like Iron Mountain, but they have to have access to it should the FDA want to audit. And another thing is the sponsor will send the site a CD-ROM of the EDC data uh, that was collected from the EDC so that the investigator can have access to that and should any regulatory agency want to audit the records, they'll have that CD-ROM available. So that's what happens at a closeout visit. Hopefully this helps. I'd like to keep it short. Closeout visit, COV, happens all the time. Very important concept to understand. Thanks for watching. Dan from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Take care.